Hey, it's Jeremy Salem, and welcome inside this case study in Broad Targeting Formula 2.0. And just like the last case study, I'm going to do an overview and walk you through some of the concepts and sort of my thinking as I go through a campaign. All right, quick overview. Just like the previous case study, the important thing to remember is not what I show you about results or the actual campaign that I'm referencing, but more of the concept behind it, right? So I'm actually kind of, um, I'm actually taking existing campaigns, but just changing up a little bit of exactly what the objective was or who we were targeting, just for the sake of not giving away an entire campaign. But the important thing is the concept behind it, because basically I'm taking these campaigns and just showing you my thought of how I would go about targeting if I was starting back on day one. All right, so many of these campaigns are actively running, so the important thing is the thought process behind the targeting, right? Not the actual campaign or the actual revenue or the actual conversions, none of that. The important thing is to see how I go about targeting for a specific objective or intent. All right, so this particular campaign in the case study is in the food industry, and it's geared towards people interested in a particular type of food hobby. The goal is to get these people to opt in and eventually become a community member of a paid community. All right, so here's a snapshot of this campaign. This is actually not the entire campaign, but just one of the campaigns has over 7,000 conversions at 22 cents per conversion. Keep in mind, these are not sales, okay? These are opt-ins. These are not sales. These are people who wanted to get on the list and then eventually sell the community to. All right, so the targeting, all right? We want to target people really interested in cooking. All right. Now, they're, they're interested in eating and, and good meals and stuff, but they like cooking more as a hobby too, right? A particular type of cooking, not just, you know, recipes or locale or anything like that. All right. So, um, as I said, a particular type of cooking. And we want to target people who would be interested in our type of website or community that we eventually were going to be selling, right? So, because of that, we would want to target people who already like these types of websites or community in the same um, niche. All right, so let's take a look at this case study example. All right, so if I am in Google.com, the targeting framework I would want to use in this case would be Blog Bonanza, because lots of blogs have communities, they sell products, they get, they have big email lists. So I would want to sell. Uh, I'm sorry, I would want to target similar blogs in my niche. Okay, so people who um, are reading blogs in my niche, who subscribe to blogs in my niche, and potentially buy products from those blogs. So in this example, I want to target Italian um, Italian recipe blogs, or, or blogs about Italian food, like the cooking of Italian food and all that good stuff. So if I'm in Google, I type in Italian recipe plus blog, and you can see here that I visited some of these websites when I typed this in. Now some of these show up and some don't, but the key is I want to take a look and see um, what I'm looking at. Uh, so if I, I see, for instance, here the Italian dish, when I click on that, cooking fresh and showing you how is their motto. And uh, I would probably need to go through here and do some research and see how specific it is to Italian cooking and stuff. But as I, as I um, glance here, I see they have stuff like Parmesan and mozzarella and meat sauce, all types of you know Italian type stuff. And uh, scrolling down a little bit more, ravioli and pasta, lasagna. Uh, so it looks like it does have a focus on Italian, but it does also look like, you know, that it's not all Italian based on some of the stuff I'm seeing. So if I were going to target this, the Italian dish blog, all right, which does show up. So it's Italian dish food blog. Um, I would just put that in, and that's uh, probably a good blog, you know, of people who are interested in this type of food or this type of cooking, either one. All right. If I scroll down a bit, um, I checked this one. It was not an interest. This one was not an either. Italian Food Forever, a comprehensive site for those who love Italian cuisine. That's like a perfect uh, target for what I'm talking about here. All right, so that one does show up as well, Italian Food Forever. All right, so now I have a pretty good audience. And then if I look down here, I start getting some related interests. Italian food restaurants. Um, this one, Italian food lovers. And uh, I could go down here and 
probably find some more good ones. But let's say I go back here and, and then I, I change my search to Italian cooking plus blog. All right, I still get some of the same ones it looks like. So this says prouditaliancook.com. I have not checked these. Okay, I don't get that. I do get some proud Italian interest though, but that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, I already found this one. Okay. Let's check out this one. Alright, not sure if I typed that one in wrong or not, but I can't see it. Cookilly.com. Alright, don't see that. I can even go down here, by the way, and find some stuff. So I type maybe Italian food blog and see if anything comes up. Alright, so if I can't find anything... Um, else that shows up, my next step would probably be to go and look at their Facebook suggestions, okay? I already found two decent ones. So, let's see here. All right, this one showed up, so we'll take a look at it. And it's pretty big. We just love Italian food, discover authentic Italian cuisine. All right, so that would be actually a really good one to target. So then I would click that. There's Italian Chef Academy. That looks like it could be a good one because if it's Academy. All right, so this is like an actual school, okay? So I may want to target that, I may not. Check this one out. Okay, this looks like this is actually a restaurant. Okay, so let's say I stuck with these. My audience would be about 47,000. I may do additional research, but um, basically these are the type of interests I'm looking for. I'm looking for, for very specific. I'm looking for people interested in Italian food, Italian cooking, not just cooking, not just recipes, not low calorie, um, not 30 minute meals, right? I'm looking very specific, okay? And that's similar to the campaign in this case study. I'm looking for a very specific type of food hobby. And this is how you do that type of research, especially if you're sending them to a website or a blog or anything like that. All right, in recap, um, th in this campaign, we, bit we built a very big email list. The email list, I believe, is over 40,000 people now. And uh, many of these people have turned into community members, they're paid community members via Facebook ads and email marketing on the back end. And we can now use this data, of course, to scale using lookalike audiences and things like that. We can remarket to our custom audiences, we can create lookalike audiences off our opt-ins, off our customers, community members, all that good stuff, right? So we do the research in the beginning, we find the really good stuff, we use the blog bonanza strategy here, and then that allows us to find people that are interested in websites just like ours, and hopefully we can get them into our community. And that's what we did in this particular case to build a big email list and add members to the community. All right, so I hope you found value in this case study, and I'll see you in the next one.